In this video, we're going to pick up from where we ended the last session, uh, which was a model uh, that we could save with the name of uh, Toy Car Services Stage 4. To reopen the model, or continue from where you were before. So what we want to do next is to add the slides. So we have the faces that form those that slide region. And the first thing we're going to do is to make sure that the block that we created earlier is on the appropriate level and make sure that level is turned off. Now the part for the slide is actually completely symmetrical. So we only need to bother about making one and then we, make, we can make the other just by simply copying it. Earlier we saw the very quick way of creating composite curves. We can do exactly the same on solid or surface edges. Hold down the Alt key and left click to trace the entire edge with a single command. We're now going to simply select those two curves. And I made an extra one by accident, sorry. Select those two curves, click on Manage, and then use the Merge and Spline command to just reduce those curves to the minimum number of points necessary to keep the shape within tolerance. We're going to make a simple surface to close the front edge of this part. So go to the surface modeling tools and just click Smart Surfacer. And what Smart Surfacer will try to do by default is to make the new surface tangent to the existing faces. In that case, in this case, that's not what we want. So we can turn tangent to surfaces off. And if we're happy with the new surface, apply. That leaves us one wireframe curve that we don't actually need, so we can just remove it. Next, we want to make an extruded surface. Now, we want to force this surface to go along the x-axis. So use the YZ face of the work plane. Select the curve. We still have the surface tools open, so we can simply apply. We might need to make this surface a little bit longer, but as it's a primitive surface, we have access to the drag handles to set whatever length we wish. We can also set the length explicitly and add some taper. As this is going to be a, a free running uh, feature, a little bit of taper uh, would be a very good idea. So we can apply that. We can now select the solid, go back to the management tab and say so, select both of the surfaces. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to take this surface and make a copy. The reasons for this will become clear in a little while. So I'm going to take a copy as we've done before by pressing Control C and Control V, and then take that copy and put it onto the cavity layer. Now we will merge these surfaces and solids together. So select the solid, click the so icon, select the two surfaces, and then right click or press the apply button. It's easier to see what's going on if this solid is reversed. And so we can just click the reverse icon. And it's important to know which way around a solid is um, when it's an open solid. For when you come to do the Boolean operations, you need to know which is the inside and which is the outside. We can now select that solid and make its mirrored copy around the ZX axis. So there's our two pins 
and we now need to make a block that's going to uh, hold them together. So reopen the core block so that you can see it and then click on wireframe and what we're going to do at this stage is to simply draw a line across that back edge. Notice that the intelligent cursor in PowerShape will be snapping exactly to endpoints so it's very quick and easy to figure out exactly where you are when doing this kind of job. So we're now going to reselect the line and now hit Control K to blank everything except for that line. Make sure that the working axis is set back to Z. Click Solid, Block, and now use the Intelligent Cursor to snap exactly to the midpoint. As before, we can change the height and size, but it's much easier to do that in reference to the rest of the model. So hit Control L to bring back all the rest of the geometry. And we can now change the size of this block to suit. Make sure it's big enough to fully intersect the part in both X and Z and Y. That will make it a little bit longer here. Okay. You can also do this numerically, again, by double-clicking on that solid, and we can change its sizes. So we might choose to make it exactly 165 millimeters wide, uh, 55 in Z. The X, which is this length, does not really matter over much, because we're going to cut it back anyway. But what we will do while we're here is to add some taper to these parts. So we're going to add taper to three sides and that taper is simply going to be five degrees in each direction. Now we're going to turn off the core block, the cavity block, the core block, sorry, and create some fillets. We're going to make these fillets quite big, so I'm going to make a radius of 10 here, here, and here. Simply click the edge where the fillet is to appear and generate the fillet by clicking the right mouse button. I'm going to take another copy of this block because we need a corresponding pocket on the other side of the part. So again, Control C. Control V and position that onto layer 5. We can now merge these parts together, so making sure that this is active. Select the two solid pins and use the solid boolean operation to add everything together. Make sure it's all on level 15 and turn level 15 off. There's a little bit of wireframe that we no longer require. Reactivate layer 5. Takes it a second or two to redraw. And we're going to subtract this block from the main core block. But before we do that, we're just going to change the size of the fillets and this makes it easier when the part is um, actually fitted out when it's really being used. Quick way to do this is to open the Explorer window, select all of the fillets and then right click, modify. Currently they're all radius 10, we're going to change them all to radius 8. So that's done. Reactivate the main solid. Make sure that solid is active. And now select the insert block and use a solid 
subtraction to remove one from the other. Now we also need to create the fitting holes so we're going to make this surface a little bit longer but notice that at the moment it doesn't have taper so we're going to modify add the taper and make sure that the taper is in the opposite direction so a taper of minus two will continue that hole quite neatly again we can come back and say we want to edit make a mirrored copy of this in ZX to give us the other half, select both, come to solid modeling tools and subtract those two surfaces from the solid. And finally, we're going to take that newly created solid and pass it straight into power mill so that we can begin machining. And that is the end of this tutorial set. I hope you've uh, enjoyed learning about what PowerShape can do and how easy it is to prepare data for machining in PowerMill. Thank you.